Hello, my name is Anna, and for this discussion board post, I am focusing on the theological stance of foreign missions in the early 1900s. Missions work has risen and fallen throughout history, and in the 1900s, it changed drastically. Grant Waker, in his 2003 article, Pearl S. Buck and the Waning of the Missionary Impulse, shares one woman's thought of the missionary life in the 1900s. In 1932, Pearl S. Buck believed that the missionary call was important and necessary, but that it did not need to remain within the unchangeable body of doctrine. Her thoughts were loved and hated by many. Some believed that she did not understand the missionary call, while others thought she was one of the greatest missionary minds to have come in centuries. The popularity of Buck did not end with this speech, but rather gained traction outside of the religious world. She wrote 80 books and a plethora of articles and reviews, winning the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature in 1938. During the 1920s and 1930s, we find her thoughts to be liberal, but still within the Christian realm of thought as it pertains to the missionary life. But post-1940s, we see in her writing that she reflected an anti-Christian worldview. Her minist missionary ministry had led her away from the one in which had sent her originally on missions. Clues to this transformation can be seen in the difficult daily life of the missionary that affected her personal faith experience. She grew up in two different cultures, but not totally belonging to one or the other. Although her life was fraught with many difficulties, in essence, her life was not unlike many other Victorian Christians who released hard doctrine for the preferred modern thought. She was not alone in this journey, Waker states that by then, thousands of Christians on both sides of the Pacific had come to view con conversionary missions as culturally imperialistic and at best, and morally indefensible at worst. Reverend J. Milner Wilbur preached a sermon titled Impressions of Ethnic Religions in August 1900 that combated this rising missions ideology of the time. The rising thought was that Christians had no right to spread their religion among countries that already had a religion. The Christians shouldn't supersede other religions because one was just as good as another. Since other countries had a history with particular religions, forcing another one, such as Christianity, on another culture was wrong. Wilbur thus spoke against this idea by stating that Christians do have a right to spread their religion because it had more to offer than other religions. He stated that Christianity is the only religion that has brought God into clear and full disclosure and that we are glad to see all nations seeking after God, but there is in them not the slightest trace of a consciousness of God the Father because no other religion even hints at such a conception. However, the missionary mandate had not been forgotten by all, as stated by Wilbur, but also by other pastors and teachers of the 1900s. One man, Wilbur Owen Carver, a professor at the Southern Bible Seminary, published a book titled The Bible, A Missionary Message, which teaches the principles of missions and how it can be applied. The doctrine of the Bible had not been forgotten in regards to missions, even in the early 1900s, but now had to face modern conflict, as it does today. Thank you.